Excited delirium is a constellation of signs and symptoms that has been described and is recognized as a diagnosis. What manifests excited delirium? Patient is usually psychotic, incoherent, agitated. They'll be hyperthermic. Their body temperature will be elevated. They'll be tachycardic. Their heart rate is fast. They'll be perspiring profusely. They may actually have taken their clothing off and they will be agitated, violent. They may actually try to attack whoever is approaching them because they're responding to internal stimuli. They're not responding to uh, logic or reason. They have superhuman strength and basically the general public would be terrified when they encounter somebody like that. They will probably dial 911. You as a first responder will have to start managing that patient. What are some of the things that could cause excited delirium? Certainly, um, bath salts, adulterated bath salts, fake marijuana or synthetic marijuana. There's over 380 varieties of synthetic marijuana. Any of the stimulants, crystal meth, cocaine, rock cocaine, inhaled cocaine, crack cocaine, all these stimulants can actually affect the brain to cause hyperthermia, tachycardia, agitation, hallucination, superhuman strength, hyperthermia, person profusely perspiring, not making any sense, trying to attack whoever is close to them, that is excited delirium. If we were to approach a patient that has excited delirium, we have to have enough manpower to make sure that the team that's responding is not injured and that the patient is not harmed. Never restrain the patient face down or restrict respirations by putting any device or pressure or a knee kneeling on the person breathing. That should never happen. Anything around the airway or around the neck as far as covering the nose and the mouth simultaneously and or putting pressure on the neck could cause traumatic asphyxia. So as responders, we have to be ultra cautious to restrain the patient to keep them from harming themselves or us without causing any harm by restricting ventilation or obstructing oxygenation. If we were to approach a patient that has excited delirium, we have to have enough manpower to make sure that the team that's responding is not injured and that the patient is not harmed. Never restrain the patient face down or restrict respirations by putting any device or pressure or a knee kneeling on the person breathing. That should never happen. Anything around the airway or around the neck as far as covering the nose and the mouth simultaneously and or putting pressure on the neck could cause traumatic asphyxia. So as responders, we have to be ultra cautious to restrain the patient to keep them from harming themselves or us without causing any harm by restricting ventilation or obstructing oxygenation. The response to excited delirium is a joint response. It should be paramedic firefighters, boots on the ground, but also law enforcement. You need to have enough manpower to be able to make sure that you're not injured, they're not injured, and then with that patient that has the manifestations of excited delirium is approached that you have enough manpower and enough hands to be able to restrain them, to be able to make sure that they're safe, that the team is safe that's responding, and that there's no body fluid exposure, that there's no one that could be harmed by a wild punch or a kick from that patient. It's very important as boots on the ground, team of first responders, combination of firefighter, paramedic, and policeman, that as you're approaching that patient, if you're going to consider chemical restraints or physical restraints, that you're very, very careful not to harm the patient. You do not want to restrict ventilation or respiration by the patient. You do not want to cover the mouth and the nose so that the patient does not have enough strength and or an airway to be able to oxygenate and ventilate. Positional asphyxia is probably one of those unintended consequences of bad restraints for patients with excited delirium. As you're restraining those patients with excited delirium, to make sure that you're able to manage their airway, just in case they're vomiting or they're having difficulty breathing, the ideal way to restrain them is on a backboard with ipsilateral restraints so that you can turn them, 
you can actually manage their airway, apply suction, just in case they start vomiting. They're on an ambulance stretcher. There is no way you're going to be able to turn them to the side. But if you're restraining them in this position on a backboard, you'll be able to gently flip them, clear the vomitus, and allow their airway to be clear. Excited delirium. You can be sure whatever you document in your run sheet on those patients will end up in the hands of law enforcement and hopefully not the medical examiner. If you do it correctly as far as managing them with medications and doing the appropriate way to restrain them, document the extenuating circumstances in your run sheet and also make sure that as you're documenting, you document good vital signs, O2 sets, entitled CO2, blood pressure, Make sure that you put in there the vital signs. These are the only objective things that you'll be able to get together in a document that will reflect that you provided good care, that the patient's airway was not compromised, that the patient's respirations were not restrained. Document, document well, document completely. Make sure you capture O2 sats, and tidal CO2, blood pressure, heart rate. Uh, of course, the objective findings, hyperthermia, diaphoretic patient, hallucinations, superhuman strength. There's cases where patients, while they're being restrained, have dislocated shoulders or hips. For our paramedics who use the Joint EMS Protocols, www.jointemsprotocols.com, there are two things that we recommend. One, the use of a neuroleptic agent called Haldol, and it's basically very, very good as far as helping calm those patients down that have excited delirium. The other thing for hyperthermia, we have a hypothermia protocol. So if the temperature is 103, 104, and we need to cool that patient fairly rapidly to keep them from having a seizure, then the hypothermia protocol at www.jointemsprotocols.com should be followed.